Hello everyone, welcome back to Virtual Sunday School. I hope you all enjoyed our story last month about Moses. Now we are in the month of September and starting a new lesson. First, I wanna take a moment and I want you to think about the biggest present that you ever got. And I'll think about what is the biggest present I ever received. Hmm. Maybe your answer was a bicycle or a new tablet or a new device or video game or something. Or maybe your gift was alive, like a new animal, like a puppy or a rabbit or a goldfish. I bet we all thought of different gifts, even if they were ones that I didn't mention. No matter what, I know that they were all wonderful presents that we thought of. Because getting a gift is really awesome and special. Did you know that there are some presents that are so big that we don't even notice them? They are so big that they're kind of hard to see. Like the earth. The earth was a gift to us from God. But we can't see the whole earth all at one time. So this month we are going to go all the way back to the very beginning of the Bible. Into the book of Genesis which means beginning. And we're gonna learn about the story of creation. So today we're gonna to get our brains ready to start learning about creation by talking about the earth. And then next week we're gonna meet here in front of the church, there's the garden and the fellowship hall. We're gonna meet right here under the elm trees to talk more about the story of creation. Did you know that here at Central we have our very own pollinator garden, also known as a pollinator friendly garden. But you may be wondering, what is a pollinator? A pollinator is a certain type of insect like bees and butterflies that carry pollen to a plant and allow fertilization, which allows for more plants to be able to grow. The more plants that grow, the better quality of the air that we breathe. Our pollinator garden was just planted this last May at the end of the school year and is being taken care of by uh, the creation care team here at Central. Here, I'll show you. So here I am at the front parking lot of the church. There's the church behind me, church streets over there. And this is where the pollinator friendly garden is. Our pollinator garden is full of local or native plants that are loved by pollinators and easy to care for, like bee balm, columbine, native grasses, milkweed, and more. There's some black-eyed Susans. It is already providing a place for bees, butterflies, and birds to live, lay eggs, and work in. Next time you're here at the church, I hope you'll come check it out. And if you join us next week for Sunday School, we'll be just up there and you'll be able to look down and see it. Also see if you can spot any pollinators while you're here. And maybe even look at the types of plants and see if there's any plants that you would wanna plant in your own yard at home. We can all do small yet mighty things to help the pollinators and our earth. Our activity this week is gonna be something that you can do on your own after the video. All you will need is either like a, a, a note card or like a scrap piece of paper or maybe even some sticky notes and something to write with. And at the top, you're going to use your, your writing utensil, your pencil, your pen, and you are going to write pollinator sighting. Pause it if you need time to spell that. Once this video is over, I want you to take your card and your writing utensil and follow the instructions I'm about to give you. I want you to go outside either right after the video is over or sometime later, and you're going to put a tally mark, which are those little lines like this. Anytime you see either of these three things. The first is going to be a pollinator insect, which is either like a bee, a honeybee, any type of bee, a 
Um, a hummingbird isn't an insect, but it also counts as a pollinator, as well as butterflies, moths, flies, stuff like that. So you put a tally every time you see one of those. You're also going to be looking for pollinator plants, which are flowers that have the yellow. You know pollen at the springtime that usually gets all over our cars and stuff? Pollen is what we're looking for on the plants. So there's certain plants like marigolds and black-eyed Susans. There's also herbs like mint, as well as vines that are all pollinators. And if you aren't fully sure what the list is, ask an adult for some help and then go on the internet and search it and there'll be plenty of lists of all types of pollinator animals and bugs as well as pollinator flowers. And the last thing you're gonna be looking for is an actual live pollination happening. For example, if you happen to see a bee on some of the flowers in your yard or your neighbor's yard or something like that, and you see the bee on top of one of the flowers and it looks like it's eating, and then it flies up and over to another flower and does the same thing, that is a live pollination. So if you see a type of pollinator insect or bird, put a tally. If you see a pollinator plant, put another tally. If you see a live pollination, that is three tallies because not only do you see the pollination, you see the flower, the plant, and you also see the insects. So if you see a live pollination, that's three tallies in one. If you really wanted to, you could take this paper, maybe fold it up and put it in your pocket or your bag or something and take it with you throughout the week and use it in the car and as you're driving, you could continue to mark the tallies every time you see a pollination happening. Then by the end of the week, you could see how many tallies you have. If you have brothers or sisters, you could even make it into a competition and see who can count the most. Or you could work together to see how big of a number you can get throughout the whole week as a family. But when you're done with the activity, I want you to take a moment and look at all the tallies that you've made. Then say a thank you to God for each and every one of them. Because these pollinators are what help to take care of our earth as well as us. Without them, we would not have fresh plants that grow each and every year. Or at least not as many. I hope you all enjoyed our pollinator lesson today. Next time you're at church, you should encourage your family to go check out the pollinator garden. I can't wait to see you all next week outside, in person, underneath the elm trees. It's September 12th at 9.45 a.m. So it's in between first and second worship. Have a great week, friends. Bye.